Item number SCP-4479 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-4479 is kept within a standard safe lockbox placed at the bottom of a 30 meter vertical shaft in Site 31's lowest floor. This area is not to have any temporary or permanent doors leading to it. Any new entrances to SCP-4479-1 are to be secured and sealed with concrete immediately after discovery. Description SCP-4479 is a punch blast doorknob. When SCP-4479 makes contact with a door update door-like structure, it will affix itself to the surface of the structure as if attracted by magnetism. Once affixed, the structure can then be opened by simply turning SCP-4479, regardless of pre-existing doorknobs, locks, or obstructions that would prevent this. Opening a structure using SCP-4479 leads to a pocket dimension, designated SCP-4479-1. The nature and size of SCP-4479-1 vary depending on the specific portal used. The interior walls of SCP-4479-1 are usually similar in composition to the material of the portal. Testing Log 4479-1 Test 3 Procedure SCP-4479 affixed to jam breach gate in Corridor 12. Gate had previously malfunctioned due to debris from prior breach becoming lodged in the mechanism. Results, gate slid fully open, leading to a large space resembling a standard containment chamber. Debris originally found in the gate lay in one corner of the room. Test 8. Procedure. Safe welded shut and locking mechanism broken beyond repair. SCP-4479 affixed. Results. Door safe opens without resistance. Resultant SCP-4479-1 instance composed of interlocking gears and steel plate. At the far end of the space, a second sealed safe door was visible. Test 37. Procedure unscheduled. SCP-4479 accidentally affixed to researcher Mendoza's eyelid during infection. Results. Turning and moving, SCP-4479 generated an SCP-4479-1 instance accessible through Researcher Mendoza's eye socket. Imaging of this space via endoscopy tube revealed a spherical space approximately 1.5 meters in diameter, lined with veins encoded in vitreous humor. Test 62. Procedure. SCP-4479 affixed to large flat rock on a hillside. Results. Turning SCP-4479 allowed one end of the rock to be lifted with ease, as if on a hinge. This revealed a trapdoor-like opening under the rock that was not previously present. This opening led to a cavern approximately... This opening led to a cavern approximately 2,500 cube meters in size. Test 119. Procedure. A standalone door was set up in an open field and SCP-4479 affixed. Results. Door opened to an SCP-4479-1 instance composed of aluminum similar to that of the door frame. A single wooden door was present on the opposite end. See addendum. 4479-2 Addendum 4479-2 In an attempt to explore SCP-4479-1, Exploration Specialist DE-11424 was deployed to map out the pocket dimension. DE-11424 was provided with a standard communications, a backpack with one day's worth of rations, and a tether mounted in baseline reality. Exploration Log 4479 Begin Log D-11424 enters SCP-4479-1 and approaches the back door with SCP-4479 in hand. So, you just want me to attach a doorknob to the door and open it? No, try to open it normally first. 
Right, right. The 11424 tries to open the door using the doorknob currently attached to it. It does not open. It's locked. Looks like I don't have the key. Alright. Now I'll try it with the other doorknob. D11424 retrieves a screwdriver from his pack and unscrews the doorknob that is attached to the door. Then he places SCP-4479 in the slot. After screwing SCP-4479 into the door, he turns it and opens the door. So you just want me to enter the door? Yes, is there something wrong with that? No, no, I'm just more used to ominous caves and whirlpools. I guess I'm more of a hose guy than a door guy. There's a first time for everything, then. All right, I'll get going. D-11424 enters the door. Inside is a chamber where the walls, floor, and ceiling all consist of wooden doors lined against each other, each within its own frame. The doorknobs attached to each of the doors are identical to SCP-4479. D-11424 detaches SCP-4479 from the first door and places it in his pack. Wow, it's like I'm in Middle Earth. Excuse me? Well, everywhere I look, there's just Mordor. Why do we let you do this again? Let's tell us what's in the damn room. Nah, it's just me and these. D-11424 walks into the center of the chamber and crouches down. He smells doors on the ground. What are you doing? I used to do some carpentry. So, you're some sort of door whisperer? D-11424 knocks on the door. Yes, and I like that noted on my quarters when I get back. D-11424 moves to the walls and begins knocking and smelling the doors there. Oak, excuse me? Oh, me out of oak. Oh, noted. Um, but do any of them open? Eh, getting to that. D11424 opens one of the doors on the walls and enters a location resembling a self storage facility. Corrugated metal lifting doors line both sides of a long hallway. D11424 continues down this hallway for 300 meters before reaching the end and entering a new room. It is identical to the previous room, except instead of wooden doors, all of the doors are metallic, and in the middle of the room, there is a structure resembling a table, with the legs made out of door frames, and the top being the entire door itself. Heh, <laughs> looks like they put furniture in this one. Well, if you're feeling adventurous, we have more ideas for tests you could perform. Oh, adventures. I'm all ears. Try to knock on the table door. On it. D-11424 walks to the table and attaches SCP-4479 to the top of it. He rotates SCP-4479 and pulls, which causes the door to rotate in place, even though there is nothing securing it to its current location. D-11424 retrieves SCP-4479 and steps through the door. He is suddenly rotated 90 degrees and deposited on the floor of another similar room. In this room, all of the doors appear to be made of glass and do not have hinges or doorknobs. In the center of the room is a pylon with a blue button with a standard handicap icon. Ouch! Are you okay? Yeah, I just sort of fell on my face. Face there a little. You want to do more experiments? Actually, I think that's all we need for now. You sure? There's a really interesting button here. D-11424 approaches the button. We're sure, D-11424. Do not push the button. Well, I'm going to push it off the record then. D-11424 pushes the button. All of the doors in the room open simultaneously, including the doors in the floor which D-11424 is standing on. D-11424 falls into another room from the ceiling. However, the footage was too blurry to adequately distinguish features of the room before it passes out of view. God, that's twice in one outing! 
Once the camera regains focus, it is apparent that DE-11424 is in a confined space without any source of light. DE-11424 retrieves a flashlight from his pack and turns it on. The space is illuminated and shown to be a revolving door slightly larger than DE-11424. The door wings and floor are made of tinted glass and the perimeter is metallic. DE-11424's tether is clamped in between where the left and right walls meet. I, I said not to touch it! I carry on see you got a better of me. You are to be disciplined once you get out for disobeying orders. I know, I know. Just trying to get out for the moment. Fine. Where do you think you are? I think I'm trapped in a revolving door. It's like it's supposed to be rotating, but the tether jammed it. Actually, one moment. Take as many as you need. Not exactly going anywhere. Bumbling can be overheard from command. All right. Since you're still in there, we're going to try another experiment. Oh, you're spoiling me. You're still being disciplined when you get back. It's just convenient. Lay it on me, chief. Do you still have the doorknob? D-11424 pulls SCP-4479 out of his pack. Right here. Okay, so try to affix it to the left door part of the revolving door. What's the worst that could happen? D-11424 affixes SCP-4479 to the glass. You of all people should know better than to say that. D-11424 turns SCP-4479 and pose. Glass wall moves 20 degrees before getting stuck and cracking slightly. D-11424 pose harder. Come on, you cheap! D-11424 attempts to squeeze in through the gap, but the glass wall shatters completely. D-11424 falls forward through the resulting opening, lands on another large wooden door. SCP-4479 lands approximately 10 meters away. As he regains his footing, he turns around and the camera is able to refocus and view a larger space. This space is filled with constructs that resemble oversized interlocking gears with entire doors in place of spokes. Nearly all gears are moving steadily. Ow! D-11424 picks up SCP-4479 and walks to the center of the gear he is standing on. Right, okay, we're talking at least four or five hundred meters in any direction, but there's too many gears to make out any kind of horizon. Come to think of it, I have no idea how I'm able to see anything. There's no sky or visible light source anywhere. Do you want me to try the knob again, or just explore for a bit? Yes, keep scouting this area for now. You got it. D-11424 places SCP-4479 back in his pack and climbs onto an adjacent vertical gear, riding it upward. A loud creaking noise is heard. A bright, bright light appears from behind D-11424, who turns around. A large and determinate metal object comes into view in the air above D-11424. D-11424 jumps from door spoke to door spoke and attempts to reach the object. As the object pulls away from D-11424, he is able to climb on top of the object. It retracts through a large glowing portal, which temporarily oversaturates the camera. Can this thing just leave me on my feet for once? It's all falling over and scraping me on my knees with this place. When the camera readjusts to the lighting around it, D-11424 is lying on the ground of what appears to be a large warehouse with concrete floor and walls. The ceiling is not visible from the ground. D-11424 stands up. Whoa! What is it now? That's a lot of doors. How many? I don't know, man. I'm no mathematician. Just imagine you stole all the doors from the whole world. This place is so huge, I can't see the ceiling or the far walls. Before you explore, can you identify where you came in through? D-11424 turns around. Crap! Not really. The tether stretches off into the horizon. How much line do we even have? Never mind that. 
Do any doors in particular look suitable to start with? Hang on, I think I hear something. Like a thumping or knocking. DE-11424 approaches the eleventh door, henceforth door K. I think it's snoring. Hello? Door K opens and closes in time with the spoken words. Huh? What? D-1142 jumps back. What the hell? Who dare disturb me from my slumber? A talking door, sure, okay. Of course I'm a door commoner. What else would I be? Were you always a door? I don't know. Were you always simple-minded? I'm just gonna go find another door. Wait! I don't get many visitors. May I frame my tail for you? No thanks, I'm... Listen to it. Fine. Go on. This tale begins many, many years ago. Before I took the form that you see here today, I was once like you, a lost, wandering, slightly unhinged man. You were once a human? Excuse me, but this is my story, so sit back and pay attention, you knob. And yes, I was once a man. I came across an artifact. At the time, I knew not that my entire destiny hinged on its discovery. <laughs> hinged. A knob, which I placed at the portal of my life and turned to open the door to a new life. I learned something, you see. D-11424 holds up SCP-4479. Was it anything like this one? Not at all. Yet all knobs are the same in the end. Also, mine was gold and fancier. Anyway, I ventured through doors and behind doors, and then further still to the doors beyond doors, and the doors which are not doors, deeper and deeper, until I paid the terrible price for my discovery. And that's when you turned into a door. Ha! Despite my being a door, you're making it incredibly difficult to open up to you. Yes, since you decide to ruin my escalation, but I have found that when God closes one door, he opens a window, or in my case, another door. What does that even mean? Enough! I have entertained this intrusion long enough. Now I'd return to my peaceful dormancy. Wait, at least tell me how to get out of here. No! If we don't, then now turn you the door and be stuck in here with you forever. You make an excellent case. Let me see that doorknob. Wait, how can you see? Through the keyhole. D-11424 moves closer to door K. Much closer, boy. I did not retain my glasses when I became a door. D-11424 places the doorknob inches away from the keyhole. Door case rings open abruptly, hitting D-11424 in face. Ouch! What the hell? Have you heard of personal space? You're the one who said to come closer. Wait, hold the knob there. Hmm, hmm. I think I saw a door with a knob like this. To the right, then left, then about nine to ten doors down. Thank you. D-11424 walks down the line of doors for five minutes before finding a door with a knob identical to SCP-4479. Wait, what? We think the entity we were just speaking to might help with research involving sentient household objects. Okay. Is it possible you could bring it with you? You want me to bring back a door. It was made of wood, right? Can't be that heavy. It hit me in the face! Come at it from behind? D-11424 inspects the ground around the closed door. They're all bolted to the ground anyways. Fine, fine, proceed. D-11424 opens the door and enters the original SCP-4471 instance he entered from. End log. 